you, you look back sometimes and you're like, why would I do that? Can we skip like episode two and three? What you see on camera and what you see on these episodes, there's at least 10 times more behind the scenes that you don't know. We're not out there posting ass pictures nonstop. And yeah, no, you and I are in the doghouse together. There's such a lag time between what happens on camera and when people can see it that we're wanting to shortcut that and bring you weekly updates from the farm. Welcome to episode one of Meet the McBees, powered by Ag America Media. I'm Stephen McBee, and today we're joined by my brother Cole. What's up, guys? Cole McBee. Who supplied most of the drama for season one of our The McBee Dynasty. Thanks, Cole. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about everything that happened during the season, postseason, and really what's going on now with the farm. This is more of an introductory episode covering what this podcast will be about, and I'm excited about it. What about you? I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, a little embarrassed. I have Sorry, to always supply the drama, but... hey. That's why someone's got to do it. Tune in. Let's get down to it. Today, we're going to try to bring you up to speed on everything that's happened over the last year and a half. That's How a much lot time, to talk about. time do we I have? Gonna I was going to say it'd be about a whole week's worth, maybe more, of bringing everyone up to speed on what's happened. Obviously, since the reality show, the McBee Dynasty, we have some big projects in the works. In real life, we have some very big things happening that we're not announcing yet. Um, oh really, to all of us, right? Yeah. I think everybody has a like life changing events happening this year. It's a pretty big year for 2024 us. Twenty twenty four is going to be interesting. I'm not going to say it's bad. Not going to say it's good. It's going to be interesting. Some things are good. Some things not so good. I feel like that's kind of the way it goes with us. Yeah, most of the time <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, I guess this is going to be the first time that we've been candidly talking about the McBee dynasty and everything that has happened since the show has aired. And we're a few months out since it's aired. Can we skip like episode two and three? Oh, no. I, I don't really want to talk about those. Oh, no. We're going into Fort Worth and everything that happened since then because Pacey's it's real life. Me. And um, honestly, we had some very candid conversations with everyone from the cast before the episodes dropped. There was so much that happens behind the scenes of the show for every Hundred hours of filming. There's only one hour of footage that actually makes the episode. So there was cameras on our farming operation in and around us for three and a half to four months total. Yeah, it was like they were here for three months straight, and it would come back and for another month basically. So really, we started in late April of 2023, and we filmed all the way through October. Yeah, I mean when they all the yeah pickups, because I mean I'd they'd be gone for three weeks. Go and edit be like, something. Hey, we have to, to come this. back and yep. film another three weeks. Yep. If they didn't have enough footage or something, or you know, if whatever it was, they just had to come back and get more footage. And it, to say it wasn't a lot, and that didn't like change our lives would be an understatement. It was, I mean, it's definitely like more than what you would think. Filming it affects show. your life. It's a full time job. Yeah, it is. I know everyone sees it and they're like, "Man, that'd be so much fun to have cameras following you around everywhere." We're on a pretty tight knit schedule, and even though we have an awesome production company and awesome network, they've got a business to run. Their business is shooting this show, and so we're full-time employees for the network when it comes yeah. to that, 100%. but we're also running businesses, so it's an interesting dynamic when you're on a reality TV show because you have to balance your real life and somehow make that work while filming full-time. You'd like go to work for like two hours, have to go film another scene, head back to work for two hours, try to get as much done as you can, head back, you know, go film some more, whatever your time is that day, and it's just like... It starts to really wear you down because you're trying to do two jobs at once, and it becomes... It's a lot. lot. It's a lot. But it's and fun. I mean, it is fun. It is a, it's like a lot of fun. Whenever you go back, and not every scene... Not every lot. scene. <laughs> you, you look back sometimes, and you're like, why would I do that? And I think Cole could speak for yeah. that. 100%. For sure. <laughs> you, you look back, and you're like, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> you know, you and I had some moments where we were not at our finest no. And we definitely are still dealing with the fallout and repercussions of that. We probably deserve it, but it's well deserved. But again, there's a lot of backstory to everything that's you yeah. see what you see on camera and what you see on these episodes, there's at least ten times more behind the scenes that you don't know. And it's I'd say the weirdest thing about it is you have to become so open with your personal life. Like anything that happens, if it's a big deal, if you have a relationship problem, if you have a fight, a breakup you're supposed to phone the producers and say, we need you over here right now to film this. Yeah. Like anything that happens, you just learn to openly talk about everything. Just, and then you have to talk about it with like every person, you know, yeah. what happens. So you have to go tell like 
every single person about every one of your problems. And you just, be, you, you know, I learned a lot about you guys in the last year. You become good at communicate, not good at communication, but you become a very open communicator. There are no secrets yeah. that <laughs> we did not air out to not only everyone in our family, but really anyone who watched the show. Yeah, we did not hold anything back. <laughs> <laughs> probably sorry honestly we probably should have well the deal was going into the show the whole reason we went with the network that we did and we partnered with the production company that we did was uh Jeff Jenkins Productions everyone on their team really made us feel so comfortable whenever we were yeah. shooting and they have a track record of success so um Jeff Jenkins was one of the early uh, producers for the Kardashians. Yep. Um, but they have a track record of success with these reality shows, and one of the big things they focus on is not trying to lie or deceive the cast. So every single time we have a very dramatic scene or something's going on or a fight's taking place, they don't try to mislead us or trick us and make us out to be people that we're not or confuse us where you have some production companies that strictly try to do that. Yeah, like they're almost like playing a game with all you guys. They, yeah. Because, I mean, it's pretty, once you have a lot of drama going around, you're talking about everything, like it can... Well, the production it, companies, it the, the producers quick. know what's going on, and they can pull different strings if they wanted to, to be like, hey, Cole, you should have heard what Steven was saying about you earlier. And they can play mind games with you like that. And yeah. that's the good thing about Jeff Jenkins Productions and everyone there is they don't do that. No, and I mean, they let us be us for the most part. Yeah, you know, for, they did. I mean, they let us be us, oh, which was good. I honestly thought whenever we'd go out to bars that they were going to really control everything and not let us cut loose. And whenever we were in Fort Worth, Cole was able to be who single Cole is without any um, holdback from the producers. They just ran the cameras and just followed him. Yeah, I wish they would have stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should have stopped me, but it it was, for good that TV. was, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, whenever you're single and 23 and you have a bunch of cameras around you and you're, everybody's looking at you in a bar, you got to put on a show and that's what I was trying to do. And yeah, it, it was, was a show, bud. It was ugly. I think everyone there was a little bit mind blown at it, but not Jesse and I, cause we yeah, I was witnessed say, it. It was about a normal <laughs> night for us whenever we're single and having a good time. Yeah, it was a normal night out at the bars. And I wasn't, uh, you weren't the only one. I was in that boat later on in the season in Nashville. Yeah, I was about to say, I didn't want to bring it up, but. Yeah, no, you and I are in the doghouse together, unfortunately. Still in the doghouse, I think. Here we are four months after it aired, a yeah. year and a half after all that happened, and I think we're still. Completely different situations now than it was a year and a half ago. But we're still in the doghouse. Hey, y'all. Today's episode is brought to you by Ag America, your go-to financial partner for all things agriculture. As the largest independent financial firm dedicated to rural America, Ag America is changing the game of ag, lending and leveling up financing options for farmers, ranchers, and landowners across the nation. And I'll let you in on a secret. The thing that sets this company apart from the rest is the people. They understand firsthand the unique needs of American farmers and ranchers because many of them grew up on the farm themselves. They take a farmer-focused approach to finance, prioritizing relationships over transactions to help you build a stronger financial foundation for your farm and family. So whether you're looking to buy land or secure working capital, Ag America has your back. Visit agamerica.com today to learn more and see how they can help you achieve long-term financial success. Because when farmers thrive, we all do. So, McBee Dynasty, Season 1, what was the biggest unexpected thing for you going into it? Obviously, I have a little bit of reality TV experience, so I knew a little bit. But I think, like, I'm not, like, I'm open towards you guys, but I don't just, like, go there talking about things and talking about everything a lot. And they, like, I mean, they make you feel comfortable, and they, like, kind of get the information out of you, like, more than what you would think. Like, and they have you, like, they get you talking more than what, like, everybody said. Like, everybody was nervous doing interviews, but once you're in there and doing them, like, they really, like, open you up and get you saying Talking everything. shit. Yeah, <laughs> talking a lot of shit. I mean, I really try not to be, like, a... Uh, gossiper like a shit talker but boy after this shit i I'm they do talking, they sit there you sit there in a one-on-one -on -one interview and they just drill you with questions i mean i talk so much shit on steven last year. Bad. Like, honestly for like would, three months straight it was yeah it was pretty rough I'm but sorry. i didn't i don't mean much. it i just i did mean it but they really didn't air as much as i thought whenever i'd walk out of those interviews i'd be like um what did I just say? Like, I literally just went in. I went in I'd on like you. I'd be, like, nervous to go see people afterwards. Oh, I, I know. I don't even know what I said. I'm I'm, like, I felt man, so I bad. Just... You, Dad, Kala. Yeah, we were all going in on each other. But everyone goes in on each other. That's the whole point of one-on-one well, -on -one interviews. Well, they see and ask you all them questions, you know. Yeah, they're like, like, what does Cole do to piss you off? I'm like, 
Hang on, let me grab my freaking notebook here. Yeah. But uh get me started. Yeah, that would be one thing that I think for anyone coming into reality TV would be unexpected is just how open and candid of conversations you have. Um, I would say for me, the biggest thing or the biggest unexpected thing that came out of this season, mm, 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 I would really say the support we've had from local areas was a little better than I expected. Yeah, that was the only thing I was really nervous about. Yeah. Um, you know, they hit on some things with local areas, which none of it was false, but it wasn't stuff that, like, we go around talking about a bunch just because yeah. we don't want to cause a lot of issues. And I was a little worried about locally around here, but everybody, I mean, there's been a ton of support. You know, sometimes Facebook ain't the prettiest, but that's with any reality show. I mean, yeah. that's what it's made for is reality, to, for them to go in, on there and say what they feel about us. But yeah. honestly, whenever we're in town and whenever we're out around here, I haven't had anybody come up being a, like a jerk to me. Everybody come mm-hmm. up saying they love the show. They might have called me an idiot. And told yeah, me that. laugh at you, yet, but, but they're not was, actually, no. you know, pissed off or talking crap. And nope. I, I think before the show even aired, we said – you know, it was magnified the issues we, we have with some locals and 85 to 90 percent of the people support us in and around our farming operation. We have 10 to 15 percent that hate us and the ones that do hate us. They really good hate Lord. Us they hate us. Let yeah. me tell you. But um, I think that was just, you know, those numbers, that ratio stayed the same. It was just increased on an exponential scale with the amount of exposure we had. Right. For sure. I would say, I mean, yeah. Ninety uh, percent of people that messaged me and that were talking to me were all love the show. Yeah, mm-hmm. positive stuff. I mean, they they all had their inputs on different people, and that's what the show is made for. A lot of yeah. people they, they like everyone me over seems you. to pick a side or pick a person that yeah. they love the best. Um, yeah, I mean, I I enjoyed it myself. I, I liked it, I, and I love meeting new people. Like going out, like I don't know, I kind of like it whenever people like you know like come up to me and talk to me. So it don't bother me like seeing everybody and talking to everybody. Else. Cole loves his fifteen minutes of fame. No, I, yeah. I'm not. I'm. I do too. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it's, but no, I, I love like going out and meeting new people, and mm-hmm. I feel like we met a lot of people since the show. We have met because, a lot. There's been yeah. a lot of cool opportunities that have come from the show as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, just connections that we've had, networking opportunities, and we're hoping that that grows as time goes on. Um, sure. And obviously, we won't get into too much of what we're doing right now regarding the McBee dynasty, but uh, we should have some announcements in the near future, I would say. Yeah. Exciting announcements. We'll see. It ain't, Never know. It ain't the end of it. <laughs> Never know. Uh, as far as real life businesses, let's go into the farm. I'll let you talk more about where we're at now. Everyone saw we were trying to get this private equity fund to invest in our car washes, and at the end of the season, they backed out which wasn't completely unexpected. Our car washes are a new operation. We haven't stabilized them yet. Hell, at the time, I think five locations were under a year old. Dude, we just hit two years on. Yeah, we just hit two years yeah. on our first location and we're about in to have July. 10 opening. Yeah, I mean, nine yeah, and ten. Yeah, yeah we'll have on. nine and ten opening in the next two months. But our first location we ever opened up opened in July of 2022. So we just hit yeah. two years. And most of the time those take almost three years to stabilize before anyone would even look at investing in those from a private equity standpoint. So that fell through, not completely unexpected, but it would have been nice. Um, Very nice. So what are we doing on the farm? Well, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm happy with how everything looks this year. Mm-hmm. We just got done with silage last week. I see a lot of people around this area chopping mm-hmm. silage. Um, corn was Obviously, 60% last Monday. We have a little bit. That was a hair dryer up north on Which Clevenger. means we're a month away from harvest? Yeah, I'd say a month away, probably okay. middle of September. We were hoping to start a little earlier this year, but... It just stays know, wet. Just, yeah, it stays wet, might, but not. But we'll see. I don't know. I mean, this rain that we got today, that got might be... the two inches this morning across every farm. That might be the most money-making rain of the year. I'm not for sure. For it, sure. That was we, a big it, rain. Without a doubt. Yeah. The, we were really dry. We were. The, what, July 4th? or third was the last major rain we had. Mm-hmm. And then we went through the rest of July with it being mid nineties and July was brutal. July was rough. Yeah. And our corn was starting to feel it. Our beans weren't really taken off like they should have. No. And then we got two inches of rain today, which is August 12th. That two we're inches this. and climbing right now. Two and inches more, and climbing and yeah. more coming this week and mild temperatures. Yeah. The temperatures are huge. I mean, mm-hmm. it's yeah. It so ain't not on 10 wood. degrees no more, which I'm happy in. Knock on wood, we have some crazy good crops that we're cutting this fall. I just wish prices were Well, I was going to say, we're going to need them to be crazy good with the way prices yeah, are. Yeah, trust me, I know. It's frustrating, but I don't know. That's the game that you play when you farm. 
It's going to the casino every single night, I guess, or every single year. Yeah. It's, we're, we're working on some different ways to uh, hopefully diversify out of the row crop side of things. Personally, I'm not a big fan of row crop. Um, I just don't like that you can't control, number one, Mother Nature, number two, the cost of what you can sell your product for. doesn't matter what we grow. doesn't matter how we grow it. My corn is worth the same as my neighbor's, which is worth the same as his neighbor's. And I hate that because you have no control over anything. And whenever you're predicting revenue based on Mother Nature, it can swing from 60% of your projected revenue to 120%. There's no way to budget. It's I won't go on a tangent, I was but gonna say. I have very bad frustrations with row crop operations and the positions it puts farmers in who literally work seven days a week. So Tough. that's why we have things like the car washes, the home building company, the meat facility now, and we're steadily growing our uh, Angus cattle operation, our bison, and we're actually going to be bringing in some pasture-raised hogs as well. Pretty excited about that. That'll mm-hmm. be, uh, you know, something that we're new to. Mm-hmm. But Yeah, and really what we've of- done is we've positioned our cattle operation to move into 100% regenerative practices where we're micro-paddocking these pastures and moving cattle four to five times a day. Um, which is going to be his job. I'm in the office scheduling all of it and making sure that we can do it financially. He's the one that actually has to implement it. So I don't think Cole's as excited as I am. I mean, it's definitely going to be like the most bang for our buck with our acres. Without I mean, trying to get like, I mean, as many head per, you know, mm-hmm. in pastures that we can get. Because we run, to- right? If we were to run just rotational grazing, we can run a cow-calf pair on what, two and a half acres? Yeah. I mean, and on our best pastures right now we are you know when you start yeah. getting some of the poor pastures we're building up you know it gets to three and a half acres four yeah four acres but right now on our better pastures two and a half two and a half acres. acres see i bet if we go regenerative practices and amp grazing we could end up doing a cow calf pair on an acre and a half yeah i mean i i have i mean there's some huge benefits into it I, i'm not huge. as like uh knowledgeable about it as you are but i have been trying to listen to all the videos you've been sending me and i've got cole jesse and jake denton who work on the cattle side doing an online course learning regenerative ag i can send it out actually i can post it in the link of this podcast too but anyone that is a cattle rancher highly 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 recommend getting into this course it's not that expensive it's a couple hundred bucks and it will completely make you rethink the way you are grazing your cattle They are taking straight desert ground that you wouldn't think could grow a weed and turning it into a lush cattle pasture through amp grazing. You haven't gotten to that, have you? No, I I think that's like video three or chapter three. So, yeah, I'll post that in the link too just because I want anyone in the ag industry or that runs cattle to really look at the benefits of it, and it's not that expensive to implement. Really, it's just a bunch of poly wire and a little bit more um, scheduling. A little on. Yeah, it's a little bit more hands-on. You're moving your cattle four to five times a day, but you can do some things to automate that with automated fence buckles and whatnot. It's crazy what 2024 brings. Oh, it's going to bring a lot of change. A lot of change. There's going to be a lot of firsts in 2024. Um, I think Cole will be the biggest uh, one to... uh, Cole will definitely have the biggest change in 2024, without a doubt. I will. I would say. Can't go into it yet, but my life is um, changing. For the better. It is. Yep. <laughs> For the better. Right. Where's Jesse at today? He is, he's probably going back to St. Joe. I don't know if there's yeah. doing much out there. We've rain. got location number nine, St. Joseph, Missouri, on our car washes that is yeah. just finishing up. Jesse's over. kind of been head head man on that, trying to get that done, and he's ready for it. It's pretty good. He's ready to be yeah. back at the farm. Once Jesse's done with that car wash, we're really not building out as fast as we were. Obviously, if y'all watch the show, we didn't get the private equity deal. And we're using our personal capital to build these car washes, which are $7 million build-outs apiece, which means we have about 1.25 to 1.5 liquid capital in each location, which is a shit ton. And it makes us cash-strapped, as it would most um, family operations. So we're planning to just build out these 10 car washes, and from there maybe build one to two out a year um, until something changes or we were injected with private equity money, which means Jesse's back on the farm. Yeah, which he's ready. He's, been he's trying, ready. He's been trying to get back, but we just have to have him run into some car oh, washes. And, and Jesse, I ain't going to do it. So he's, no, he's, and, and Jesse finished out building a house in Liberty. Well, I guess it's Kearney address, which is just north of Kansas City. Him and Allie just finished this house last year. I think it was in the show. Uh, they'd moved into it. Yeah, I think so. They'd moved into it, and Jesse hates it. 
we've never lived in a situation where there's an HOA and somebody governs what you can and can't do at your own house. For some reason, Jesse's like the least problematic guy ever. Jesse's but the most had... non-confrontational, and he has had it with his HOA. Oh, like, there was a problem every week that you're, like, emailing him, going off, and it's just... Jesse's over it. Yep. I th- like, literally, if it was his choice, he would sell that house and move back up here full-time. Oh, like, tomorrow. I, I think it's causing yeah. a little bit of tension with him and Allie, um, along with the stress that comes with planning for a wedding. It's too bad we won't get to see all that play out. Or will we? I don't know. You never know. That's not up to us, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. Other big news. Excited to announce that I will be officiating Jesse's wedding. I thought I had to take a course to become a I wedding I was going to say, didn't you just say you didn't get your license yet or whatever you got to get? Dude, I just paid 50 bucks today. I'm good. You already got it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I thought there was like some lessons that you had to do was like testing. No, you just go online. You can just buy that thing. Do you know what you're going to say yet? They send me a packet where it says, like, the steps to, like, how a normal officiator does mm-hmm. it. And then I'm going to put my plan in place. Yep. I'm excited for it, though. October 25th, 19th. 19th, not 25th. Not 25th. I don't know why. I, I that get mad at you. You said it one yep. time. October 19th. It's an outdoor wedding. It'll be fall. It'll be gorgeous. It's an out- I mean, it's at, like, this beautiful barn venue. Yeah, it's a nice place. Are you the best man? No. Why not? Because he said we weren't doing brothers best mans. Remember? Is that just because he doesn't want you with a mic in your hand giving the best man speech? I told him I'm grabbing the mic. I got something to say about him. Is it an open bar? It better be. <laughs> they, I think so. They're spending enough money on this thing. <laughs> no doubt. Let me just say, I did not realize how expensive weddings are. Yeah, I told Casey, we're, if we ever get married, it's on the farm. Like, yeah, we're doing it up here. I'm setting up some chairs and some, yeah. Maybe behind Red Barn or something. Yeah, it's. It, I ain't paying that much. No. Spend that money on hunting. Yeah, I was going to say, like, there's a few elk hunts. There's a few elk hunts you could go on for that type of money. What else going on on the farm? Prepping all the combines for harvest, really? Yeah, they've been going through combines nonstop. The guys have been back there in the shop every day. Yeah, we just I finished. Mean, getting everything ready. Just finished a fulfillment center. Yep. Um, oh, yeah. That's a, which is a big deal. Yep. We started that project in February. This fulfillment center, we're going to be able to handle about 1,000 to 1,200 orders a day, and we're already doing about 500 orders a day Mm -hmm. Um, and Black Friday's coming up so that's going to scale quickly that's been a really fun project of mine and honestly that's where I want to take the farm is to grow our meat company our e-com sales where we ship out beef nationwide beef and pork and the fulfillment center is a big part of that because we have a giant freezer in there where we pick pack and ship all the orders so rather than growing the row crop side my focus is on the meat company and the e-com side that's what I want to do I want to work under a roof to where Mother Nature has no control over what we do, for the most part, and then we also can control the end price of our product. Never losing game or never winning game. Like yeah, you never always, win. You just always lose. You do all the work, and then it'll either like even this or year, like we're all happy about our crops, and, and then, then go, the prices you, suck. Like suck so bad where it's like we're basically well, giving them away. Yeah, might as well feed the corn. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, terrible. we we'd be better off to feed out our corn to our cattle and walk them off the farm. I think that's a saying up in Iowa. It's like. If you have the opportunity to, or maybe it was in the 80s they brought that up. They said, you can't make money unless you you walk your crops out the, the farm. Basically, yeah. you feed them feed out. Feed them out, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I finally feel like we are getting our operation very well ran from an efficiency standpoint, and our crops have looked better this year than they ever have. Yeah. No, we're really starting, I mean, we'll submit it. We're a first-generation farmer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we started, we had a learning curve. We had stuff we had to learn, but we're, I'll tell you, we, it's not like we haven't put in the work to learn it because we, um, oh shit, we've worked I mean, harder Jesse than anyone Stretch, out there. Yeah. Jesse us. Stretch, you guys out in the field, and then the partners that we've had this year, especially. Yeah. Um, been huge. The last three huge. years, we've been going in the right direction. We I have. Like, I like where we're heading. Yep. We just, I really wish prices were better. We'd really like where we're heading. <sighs> well, we're changing things up. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> uh, relationship wise, you and Casey all good? Yeah. Do, all right. Can I ask about you or let's just push that? No, okay. not right now. Sorry, because I, I don't know where I were at. Yeah, I didn't know where to go with that. But yeah, no, Casey and I are fine. Good. You guys yeah. building a new house? Yep, that's um, taking up most of my time right now. Which hopefully that'll be done November twenty fifth. Yep. Hopefully, just Thanksgiving. We're moving yep. in that week. Good. Good. We'll see though. Yeah. That's kind of projection. The whole reason we're doing this podcast is there's such a lag time between what happens on camera and when people can see it that we're wanting to shortcut that and bring you weekly updates from the farm that's sort of what this podcast is um we'll be bringing in different guests as they come in this fall we have langston coming in to hunt again um 
you know, we'll see if Dylan Scott's able to swing in here, but we'll have them on the podcast. We'll have other guests in on the podcast that are from the industry. But other than that, it's really just going to be an update on what's happening, what's taking place on the farm and um, kind of a life update. I think that we live, and I'm not saying we're interesting. I'm just saying the life that we live is interesting because of all the different dynamics and the different businesses that we run. And we have a really cool audience that we get to showcase our lives to through the show and from also just building up our social media. I know Hayden's done an incredible job on our TikTok, our Instagram pages. Yeah. Those were all oh, growing. Been rolling. Those were growing before the show, though. Oh, yeah, they were. I mean, even before the show took off, we were, the Instagram page was like, Growing at an exponential rate. I mean, yeah. it was really growing. Which, TikTok I mean, was over 100K. Now I think we're knocking on the door 200. Um, Instagram's at 112, which yeah. is pretty damn big for a farm page. Like, that's not... We're not out there posting ass pictures nonstop and got booty photos all no, over the place. I don't think you guys want to see that. No, but. you all wouldn't want to see that anyways. But I'm just saying, for like a page that is just farming and ranching, that's pretty damn good. It is. I mean, which, obviously, I can't edit anything. I'm, I'm a farmer, so... We know who who did that for us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hayden. Hayden does a good job he, with that. He busts his ass getting videos out and does a good job at it. I mean, there's a lot. I'm terrible at Instagram. I can't even post like Dude, I made a video on CapCut last night. It took me three hours. Yeah. It was like I'm like a ter- like I don't even post. I, like, I had to like force myself to sit down and post a picture and then come up with a caption and think of what I'm like. I'm terrible at it. So luckily Hayden came along and he has really done a good job with our socials. Yeah. Well, that's another reason why we're doing this podcast. It's an easy way for us to give updates on the farm because we suck so bad at social media. Yes. Terrible. <laughs> the only one who's good is dad. Yeah. And he just <laughs> If you follow my dad, hey, hey, that dude I will mean, post like five, five to six videos a day, and he is the ultimate definition of absolutely not giving a single fuck. There's no edit in his videos. None. Actually, I have – lately he has been putting, like, two videos together, but there's uh-uh. no, like, uh, transition. No transition? No, it's just, like, a video to another Just a video. hard stop? Yeah. Yeah, I usually, he will just go, like, word flubs, grammar errors, and all. He'll lose his train of thought in the middle of talking, and he'll just be like, uh, and then he'll pick it up again, but he'll just post it all. He just goes everywhere with it. I mean, I think he kind of updates everybody about all of us. That is true. Too, through his Instagram. That is true. If you need to keep up to date, like, daily updates for us in the farm. Hourly updates, actually. Just yeah. follow my dad. You can do that. <laughs> we had to tell him, like, dude, calm down a little bit. He's like, well, everybody <laughs> loves it, man. I mean, I ain't stopping. I'm like, all right. Do you? Yeah, he's going to do him either way. Uh, we need to get him in here on the next podcast. Yeah, we better schedule out about two hours. Yeah, I know. No doubt. What about Braden? He wasn't showcased a whole lot in the movie or in the uh, series. Can we talk about Braden? We'll keep it light. Okay. Keep it light. Braden doesn't like the farm, candidly. No. He's not a fan. Braden grew up with my mom in the city, so he loves staying down there, hanging out with his friends. Um, As far as the farming operation goes, I think he sees us all working seven days a week and getting frustrated and stressed out 24-7, and he wants nothing to do with it. Can't blame him for it. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, I can't blame him. I mean, we want him up here. Yeah, I'd love to have him up here. We always try to talk him into getting up here. and I mean, he he obviously comes up and hangs out on weekends, but I think he, uh, growing up, he's seen us and Dad working every weekend and was like, I ain't doing that. Yeah. He's a smart one, but yeah, we were all he, he actually there. is yeah. probably the smart one for doing that, but no. that's why he wasn't shown a whole lot in season one. We're hoping that he comes around a little more often. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, uh, Knock on wood. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. He, um, he's had some big life changes like every one of us. So and yeah, he's, he's, he's a single man now. He is a single man. Now. That's the first time in his whole life. Like being, literally, being he's, an adult as a single, he'd man. been in an eight-year relationship, right? Yeah, like the, like thirteen years old. They, yeah. Started. So but he's doing good. Yeah, they're he's thriving as a single man, and she's uh, already lost what forty pounds. You know how it is. Fifty, fifty. Yeah, you, you know, know how it is. As soon pounds. as you get in a breakup, it's like Jim's calling your name. You just, uh-huh. Every guy gets in there. And then what happens when you get back in a relationship, Cole? Yeah, you put on forty pounds. So <laughs> let's not talk about that. There's been some big changes in life. <laughs> oh. Well, I think that is really all we're going to bring you guys up to speed on today for the first episode. Yeah, We're going to have plenty more of these. We're going to produce them weekly. So we'll be pumping them out nonstop. I'll try to have someone in here, whether it be from my family, friend group, someone from the farm, talking every single day so it's not just my dumb ass up here giving a lecture. But sometimes it probably will just be me. So thank you guys for tuning in. Again, Meet the McBees. Drops every single Tuesday on YouTube and will also be available for every single audio podcast platform. You can go find it anywhere. And we're also going to have an Instagram page dedicated to it, too. 
So. Wow. I didn't even know all this. Oh, yeah. This is pretty cool. neat. Yeah. That's the cool thing about partnering with Ag America Media. So we're partnering with them on this podcast. Ag America is all about uh, lending in the farming and ranching world. Ag America Media is one that is producing this podcast. So they're taking a lot off of our plate. Great partner. And it's really going to help us out to be able to pump these things out because we candidly don't have time to edit, post, do a lot of the work that goes along with doing a podcast. So now we're able to do that. We can just come in here, talk, send it over to them and yeah. put it all That's together. all we're good at is talking anyways. So. I wouldn't even give us that much credit. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in from the farm. Again, Meet the McBees, Building a Dynasty. We'll see you next week. <laughs>